Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing health checks in our web API. We're gonna be seeing how we can actually add them, customize them, and make them work based on our needs. So let's get started. So before we actually jump into the code, let us discuss a normal architecture of a web API. So here we're gonna have this, let's say this is gonna be our web API. And usually our web API, in order for it to run, we're gonna have a database attached to it. And we might also have a another web service. So I can just take this. So the, within the, this normal structure of our web API, these are the normal structure that we might have, where basically our web API is heavily reliant on a database and our web API is also relying on some kind of a third party service to get some kind of information. And whenever a user does any types of calls, the request will go to the API, the API will go to the database, or it will go to the third party, get the information and get it back to the user. Sometimes as well, we might have Redis available on our machine or basically some kind of a caching. So all of these might actually all work together in order for us to have a very fluent uh, web experience for the user who are actually using our applications and in order for us to have all of the business logic enabled. So let's say for any reason that with this web API is calling this third party service and this third party is not running. We need, we need a way where we can actually identify this and basically have some kind of a view where we can actually see that there are some services who are not running. Or for example, if for any reason our database server is not responding, we need to also know about it if for any reason our redis is not responding we need to know about it if for example we have a combination of failures between those different services we also need to know about it and this is where health checks comes into place health checks basically will give us the capability of actually checking the health of our application so we can actually have the health of our web api we can actually check the health of our database we can check the health of third-party services we can check the health of redis etc etc so there is no limitation of the health checks that we can do and those health checks can go into a lot of different levels of details so we can check if the connection is failing we can check for example if it's a authentication which, which is failing it we can check if it's a rate limitation we can check if the cache is bust we can check db db errors that we are receiving so there's different levels of health check that we can implement there's different levels of customization that we can actually do in order for us to do all of this but for now in order for us to make this as simple as possible and basically in order for us to start with the basics and maybe later on we can have a video which delve into a bit more advanced topics when it comes to health check in today's video what we're going to be delving into these two we're going to be going into the health checks of the ip of the api so that's number one we're going to be doing a health checks on the database that's number two and we're going to be doing health checks on the and a random third party service which is going to be number three and once we have done this we're going to be able to see how we can actually have that endpoint that we're going to be calling and how we are able to see all of the different information that we're going to be using in order for us to do all of these different health checks for our applications so basically what we want to do and we want to have some kind of a middleware it's called health middleware or health service and basically this health service is going to be running within our application and this health service is going to be responsible for checking all of these different services health and reporting it back to us. If you don't really know anything about middleware, I have covered a video where I delve into middlewares and how do they work. I'll link it here somewhere in the description down below. But basically, a middleware is a service that runs within our application pipelines. So it runs whenever our uh, application is actually running. So with, with that said, let us jump into the code and basically get started in implementing the health checks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to Rider. And this is the sample API that we have built over a few videos ago. So basically, it's a very simple CRUD operation where we have two controllers we have an achievement controllers and rabbit controllers and within this drivers controller we're able to see we're able to get all of the drivers basically we have a full cloud operation available as well as for the achievements one as well we can see we are utilizing sqlite as our database and if we go to our program.cs we can see here that we are utilizing the unit of work in order for us to communicate with our database we have our db contacts here and basically we can see we have these two tables and we have those different configuration available okay perfect so now what we were going to do is before we jump into anything i'm just going to run I'm just going to run my application to make sure that it's running perfectly. So here in Postman, as you can see here, I have my API endpoint running and I have, I'm calling the drivers. I'm doing a get request. And if I click on send, I can see that I have all of my drivers coming back. Currently, I have only one driver. If I want to add a driver, I can put a post. I can get to the body. I can make it row. I make it JSON. And then I can add the information here. It's going to require first name. So I can say Muhammad, last name, say Lawand, and driver number. I'm just going to say 23 send and we can see here a new driver has been created i got the 201 now if i do a get request 
So let's just open it in a new one. And I do, I get requests for drivers, which should be able to see that I have two drivers available. Perfect. So now that I have my API up and running and we are able to verify that it's actually running, what I want to do right now is I want to start adding the health checks. So the first thing that I need to do is I want to go to my program.cs and basically within the services before the builder.build, I want to add the following. So I'm going to put builder.services.add health checks. And this is going to be very simple. What I'm doing here is I'm actually enabling the middleware of health checks, which is this is the server that we have discussed before. So I'm basically I'm telling .NET is that you're going to have a middleware or you're going to have a service going to be running and you need to enable it. So this is what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm enabling this. And then what I want to do here is I just want to add a mapping for it so i'm gonna put add map health checks and i'm gonna provide an endpoint for it which is gonna be forward slash health and this is gonna be the endpoint that i'm gonna be utilizing in order for me to check my health checks and right now this is gonna be only checking the api level of my health check so if you go here and this is gonna be only gonna be checking this current version of my api checking everything running or not so if i go back to postman and let me open a new one i'm gonna put the same url but instead of the api forward slash drivers i'm just gonna put health which is what i have added right now and if i send this I think application is not running, so let me run my application. Okay, application is running now. Let's go back to Postman, do a request. And once we do the request, we can see we got a healthy and we got a 200 OK, which means that my application right now has, is fully running. And basically what I did here is I covered this first section of my API to make sure that it's running as it should be. OK, perfect. So now that I have done this, the next step is I want to add the health check for my database. So I'm going to make this in green right now because we have actually done it. So now what I want to do is I want to actually add a health check for my database. So how can I do that? If we go back to Rider here and if I take a look at my program.cs, I can see that I'm actually, let's stop this first. I can see here that I'm actually utilizing uh, SQLite for my database. And because I'm using SQLite, I need to make sure that the health check that I'm adding is gonna be SQLite compatible. And this is gonna be really easy. So in order for me to enable this, I'm gonna go here to my terminal. And what I wanna do is I wanna install a package which is gonna allow me to add health checks for SQLite, which is gonna be, let's go to the API, let's clear this. I'm gonna add it now, so I'm gonna put dot .NET add package ASP not core dot health checks dot sqlite and we're gonna install this okay perfect we can see it has been installed so now if i open up my formula one dot api i go to my cs proj and i'm able to see here that i have my sqlite health check integrated okay perfect and installed so now what i want to do is i want to actually enable this so here where i have added my health checks i want to add the following so before the semicolon I just want to add dot. I'm going to add SQLite. And then here, what I want to do is I want to actually specify the configuration that I want to do for my health check. So the first one that I want to specify is my connection string to which database, in case I have multiple databases. In this case, I don't. I only have one, but it's always good to put it here. I want to specify the database that I want to do this health checks against. And this is going to be my connection string that I have specified earlier here. So that's going to be the first one. The second one is going to be the healthy query that I want to actually execute. And this is going to be very simple. I'm just going to put select one on my database and if this actually execute it means that my my database is up and running third is i want to give actually this health check a name and i'm just going to call it sqlite check then i want to specify my failure status so in case anything has happened what are the failure status that i want to say and i want to say that this is going to be a unhealthy connection because my database is not actually able to work and lastly i want to specify some tags and these tags basically they're going to be a list of strings so i can say here it's going to be sql SQL light I'm gonna say also health checks perfect so now what I did here is I basically I have enabled SQL light into my health checks and I'm actually able to see this so what I want to do is I'm gonna run my application I'm gonna go back to postman and what I want to do here is I'm gonna send the request again and we got healthy and this healthy is actually pretty good but it does not really give us a visibility about all of these different services because currently right now what I have here is I have checks for my API and I have checks for my database but I cannot really tell which one is which I cannot tell if this is if for example, if this is failing or this is failing, I'm not able to tell between them. So how can I do that? How can I actually have a more detailed view about this? This is pretty easy. So what I want to do is I want to go back to Rider and I'm going to stop my application. I'm going to go back to my terminal and I'm going to install a different package. So let's clear this up. So we're going to put .NET add package ASP net core dot health check dot UI dot client. And I'm going to run this. And now it has been installed successfully. I'm going to go back to my program.cs and what I want to do here is where I mapped my health check endpoint, I want to add a new health check options. And within this health checks options, what I want to do is I want to configure the level of details that I want to showcase. So here I'm going to have something called a response writer. I'm going to say this response writer is going to be equal to health checks 
is going to be equal to UI response writer dot health check response. So now once I have done this, I'm going to run my application. I'm going to go back to Postman and now I'm going to click on send. And now we can see we have a complete different story. So now what I have here is I have my application in general, which is running. And now I have my SQLite check and I have here, for example, the status is healthy. I'm able to see the duration of my uh, request and the health check that I'm doing. And I can actually see the tags as well. So we can see here I'm getting a bit more requests uh, from what I have uh, originally had, which is only the healthy response, which is great. So now that we have covered these two, which is basically the database and our API itself, what I want to do right now is I want to actually check the third party service and in order for me to do that I have chosen a random third party API which is provided by by rapid API and basically this is, this is an endpoint that we can actually utilize in order for us to get random Chuck Norris jokes and this is here the purpose behind this area are me making calling a third party service like for example a currency conversion another microservice or anything of that nature so here as we can see the nice thing about this is I can for example choose C sharp and elastic client plus sharp and I'm able to see how to actually do this and what I want to do right now is I want to implement this service right here so inside my rider I'm going to stop my application and what I want to do here is inside my root directory I'm going to create a new inside my API directory I'm going to create a new directory called services and inside my services directory I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to call it API actually I'm going to call it Chuck Norris health check because I can have multiple APIs and the third party that I'm using and I want to make sure that it's specific as possible. So I'm going to say Chuck Norris health check. Perfect. So now that I have my API up and running, sorry, my class up and running, what I want to do here first is I want to inherit from an interface which is called I health check. And this is a built in interface that does not provide me. And this interface will give me this method. And this method here is basically going to take the HTTP context and the cancellation token. And this method here allows me to actually implement all of the logic that I need in order for me to have the health check. And the nice thing about this method here and this interface that I'm using, it will automatically work within the middleware. And basically it will automatically fit in within the request pipeline that I have. And it will make sure that everything is running as it should be. So now that we have this, what I want to do is I want to add my code. And in order for me to call a third party API, I want to utilize a NuGet package, which is called REST chart. So REST install this package right now so we're going to put dot net add package and it's going to be called rest sharp okay perfect so now that has been installed successfully what i want to do right here is i want to add my logic into it so first things first i want to specify the url that i want to call so i'm going to put var url equal and this is going to be the endpoint that i'm going to be calling and if i go back to my web browser it's going to be something around those lines so i'm just going to copy paste it and put it here perfect so now that i have specified my url the next thing is I want to specify the REST client. So I'm going to put var client equal new REST client. And once I have done that, I'm going to basically now specify the headers that I need. So if you go back to my web browser, you can see I need to specify two headers in order for me to be able to actually utilize this. So I'm going to specify this right now. And the way that I do that, I need to start building my request. So I'm going to put var request equal rest new rest request and this is going to take the url as well the type which is going to be of type get and then once i have done that i'm going to put request dot headers and headers and i'm going to specify them here so i'm going to have two headers i'm just going to copy paste them right now so i don't have to to type them manually so once i have specified all of this i want to create a response and it's going to be client that execute and i'm going to pass the request that i have perfect so as we can see this is an asynchronous request so i'm just going to make this as an await and i'm going to convert this to async perfect so now that i have this in place now what i want to say if response dot is successful i'm going to return a healthy health check so it's going to be return all i'm going to say is going to return a health check result dot healthy perfect and if it's not successful i'm going to return a health check result of unhealthy perfect so now what I have done here is basically I created my third party health check. I have utilized the interface and I have utilized the method that's provided me. Again, all of these, uh, for example, the keys and the header needs to be stored in uh, app settings. They need to be, it should not be hard coded into the code. The reason I have done this just in order for me to save time. We have already covered how to do this in different videos. If you're interested in learning more about it, let me know. Uh, but basically, this is just a shortcut. We should never put our source code or keys or secret inside the source code like this because it's not a secure uh, implementation what we need to do what we need to do is we need to make sure that it's put in the app settings or on our secure key vault or secret manager and basically put them from there so now that we have done this now how would i tell that my health check service that's running here that it needs to identify the check known as health check it's pretty straightforward all i need to do is before the semicolon i'm going to put a check 
and this is gonna be called the Chuck Norris Health Check. And then here I wanna give it a name and I'm gonna call it Chuck Norris API. And this is all I need to do. Within this line, I was basically able to add my custom health check into the health check middleware and it will be able to directly being picked up through my code. So now let's run this and let's go back to Postman. And inside Postman here, I'm just gonna click on send and we got a healthy response. And as you can see here that my Chuck Norris API is actually returning a healthy response. So let me go back to my code. And what I wanna do here is I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna go to my Chuck Norris endpoint and I'm just gonna add a random number at the beginning here in order for me to break my authentication. So now I'm gonna run this again. I'm gonna go back to Postman and I'm gonna run my health check again. And we now we should be able to see an unhealthy response back. We can see I got an unhealthy, although my database is healthy, we can see it here, it's healthy. I can see that my Chuck Norris API is unhealthy. And basically here I know that there's a problem with that. And of course, with this, I can delve more into it so for example, I can delve more into this types of response. I can add all of the types of logging that I need. I can add all of the types of notification that I have in order for me to notify the right person that this service is not working. So now that I have added this, if we go back to my web browser here, what we have done right now is have, we have also added the notification or the health check for this third party service. And we were able to complete this three health checks directly from within our .NET Web API. And this is gonna be the real power here that we're gonna be having when it comes to health check. It's very expandable we can actually expand it to all of the different services that we have we are not limited to only one or two services there is out of a new get package when it comes to health check so if we go back if we go to, to the nuget website and inside the nuget website here we just type health checks we can see here that we have all of these different health checks available for us and for us to utilize so we can have here a mongodb health check we have a postgres we have let's go we have azure storage we have azure bus we have for kafka there's set a number here we have 663 packages directly available for us to utilize health checks we have for elastic search mysql etc etc so we can see here that health checks is not only limited to what we currently have it's very ex expandable and we can actually add it to whatever service that we want and we'll be able to actually have the health checks there so one last thing about health checks that we want to discuss here so now that we have done this endpoint for our health check here so i'm gonna call it for example forward slash health similar to what we have named it so there's what's gonna happen after i have a service not running what is the next step after that and the next step usually after you have the health check here is you're going to have some kind of a notification system I'm going to make this in a blue so basically this notification system let's say you are utilizing azure so if you're utilizing azure you can utilize uh, service bus or if you're utilizing aws you can utilize sns so what you can have here is you can have a some kind of a third uh, a serverless function so it could be azure function so let's make this as yellow so this could be a uh, azure function or it could be a lambda function so this can actually live here and basically this the main purpose behind this, this fix function here the main purpose behind this uh, lambda function or azure function is for it to actually call this health check endpoint and once it called this health check endpoint if we get through it that we don't have anything running we are actually able to notify the notification system that we have and through this notification system we can either send emails so we can either send emails we can send sms if we connect this notification system to slack or teams we can send a message on slack notifying that this service is not working and this current implementation is only going to be working for services that um, for services that we are actually utilizing simplistic services like this so we're not using kubernetes we are not using advanced uh, orchestration mechanism because those different uh, tools like kubernetes or anything that has a different orchestration mechanism will have automatically health check services up and running with them so we don't really want to reduplicate the work by creating something like this but if we're only for example deploying our application to a web app or to a um, ec2 instance or basically to any virtual machine or we're basically deploying it to a random service there which does not provide us the health check service to get this notification out we need to create some kind of solution like this in order for us to have all of this capabilities uh, available for us or you can actually just use the web interface if you want to use it manually so with that said this video was just a quick introduction about health checks how we can add them into our .NET web api and how we can actually utilize them if you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe it will really help that channel if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day